Good evening. My name is Mark Syme. I'm the minister of the Northfield Church of Christ in Northfield, New Jersey, and I would like to extend a welcome to you to our evening services for Sunday, November the 27th. I hope and pray that all of you had a wonderful Thanksgiving a couple of days ago, my favorite time of the year. Uh, we will sing songs that kind of gravitate around the idea of giving thanks or being thankful. Uh, we will observe the Lord's Supper, and I have a message for you that I hope will lift you up. And so, if you would, we sing from Songs of Faith and Praise here at Northfield, but I will give you the number of uh, the song in that book, and I will give you the name, so if uh, you need a chance to get it in your book or Google it, uh, I'll try to give you that amount of time. The first song we're going to sing is number 435. The title is Come Into His Presence. Come Into His Presence, number 435. <clears throat> Come into his presence with thanksgiving in your heart and give him praise and give him praise. Come into his presence with thanksgiving in your heart. Your voices raise, your voices raise. Give glory and honor and power unto him, Jesus, the name above all names. And if you would turn to number 729, I remember it's a young person uh, always singing this song around Thanksgiving time. So it's been around for a long time. My date at the bottom of it says 1844. I guess that's a pretty long time. The title of this song is Come Ye Thankful People Come. Come Ye Thankful People people come. We will sing <laughs> verses 1, 2, and 4. 1, 2, and 4 of Come Ye Thankful People Come, number 729. <clears throat> come ye thankful people come, raise the song of harvest palm. All is safely gathered in, ere the winter storms begin. God our Maker doth provide for our wants to be supplied. Come to God's own temple, come, raise the song of harvest home. We ourselves are God's own field, fruit unto his praise to yield. We and tares together sown, unto joy or sorrow grown. First the blade and then the ear, then the full corn shall appear. Lord of harvest, grant that we wholesome grain and pure may be. Even so, Lord, quickly come, bring thy final harvest home. Gather thou thy people in, free from sorrow, free from sin. There forever purified in his presence to abide. Come with all thine angels, come. Raise the glorious harvest home. And to prepare our minds for the Lord's Supper, if we would turn to number 366 by Christ Redeemed.
366 by Christ redeemed. By Christ redeemed in Christ restored, we keep the supper of the word and show the death of our dear Lord until he come. His body given in our stead, his seen in this memorial bread. And as we drink, we see the blood until he And thus that dark betrayal night With the last advent we unite Thy one bright chain of loving ride Until he song uh, very well describes what uh, gathering about the Lord's table means. It means that we are redeemed. We are redeemed. And because of that, we keep the Holy Supper of the Lord. We gather about his table in understanding that Jesus uh, gave himself up. He offered himself as the perfect and only sacrifice for our sins, that we might indeed be redeemed. His body that is symbolized by the fruit of the vine was given in our stead. And uh, it is uh, seen in the bread. And then we drink of the cup and we think of the blood that Jesus shed for us. Uh, it was indeed a dark betrayal night. It was indeed a uh, horrible death that Jesus died. But the overriding factor is we celebrate this every first day of the week because we have been instructed to do so. We do it because through Jesus' sacrifice, we are redeemed. So each time we gather about the Lord's table, that should be paramount in our hearts that we are redeemed through the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Let's pray for the bread. Our dear Heavenly Father, we understand that his body was given in our stead, that Jesus' body hung on the cross and hung on the cross for us so we don't have to. The sacrifice was made. The life was given up. The perfect sacrifice <laughs> by which each of us are redeemed. So as we take this bread into our mouths, help us to remember that and focus on it, that we are redeemed through Jesus Christ. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. Let's pray for the fruit of the vine. We understand, dear Heavenly Father, that as we drink, we see the blood of Jesus Christ flowing from his head and his hands and his feet and his side. The blood that washes away our sins. The blood by which we are redeemed and forgiven. Help us as we partake to understand what an integral part of our lives this is. And remember that the, one of the major reasons we meet each first day of the week is to celebrate the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. 
We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. We have finished the Lord's Supper, but we are also instructed on the first day of the week to lay by in store and give back to the Lord. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, we have uh, some very, very important things written about our giving and the attitude about our giving. It's, a, it's a, an attitude of gratitude. It's an attitude of understanding that we have the privilege to give back to the Lord because we are blessed. And at a time that the world focuses on thanksgiving, we understand how much we have to be thankful for. And we can give back to the Lord so that others may come to know uh, you. Others may be helped and aided by our church here in Northville. Let's pray for the giving. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, to give with an open heart and a cheerful heart. Help us to give with gratitude. Help the stewards of this church to utilize the money that are gathered to further your work here in this part of the world. Help us that we might help other people uh, that are less fortunate than we are. Continue to bless us. Continue to help us to be thankful for all things. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. The last song we're going to sing is number 68. Again, fitting in with the season. Give thanks <coughs> is the title of the song. Number 68, Give Thanks. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his Son. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks. Give thanks. Give thanks. Thank you so much for singing along with us, if you did. Uh, I know the Lord was glorified. I know I was lifted up by the singing, and I pray that you were also. Uh, my message this evening is very simple. Uh, it will not be very long, and it is about giving thanks to the Lord. I started uh, this this morning, uh, uh, this evening, I'm sorry, uh, by uh, saying, uh, I hope you had a wonderful and blessed Thanksgiving. Uh, my family and I certainly did. We had Thanksgiving at our daughter's home. All three of Jane and my children uh, were there. Our grandchildren were there. Our grandchildren's other grandparents were there. And a good friend of ours came along with us. I think we had 12 or 13 around the Thanksgiving table. And it was a wondrous time. It was a time when we reflected uh, as a time that as we were all together, we realized as family, we had so much to, to give thanks for. And uh, I know that I certainly uh, was probably tearful 
uh, several different times, knowing that all three of our children are within uh, about an hour, an hour and a half of us. And uh, that is uh, just a, a wonderful blessing for us. I would like us to look at the 92nd Psalm this evening. Psalm 92. And it starts right where it ought to, as far as this lesson is concerned. It said, it is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your holy name, O Most High, to declare your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness by night. Aren't those words uh, just uh, uplifting to you? Don't those words uh, perhaps reflect a little bit about what Thanksgiving is all about? Because without the Lord, none of this would be possible. I have read that commentators have said that this particular psalm, uh, Psalm 92, and there are some 15 verses in Psalm 92, um, was used in what we might call the corporate worship of Israel. This would mean that people gathered together and joined and just as it says, uh, it says that they gathered together to sing praises to God, to express their thanks. It is good to give thanks. And so there was praise, there was song, and there was thanks. Why? Well, Together in song and in praise, it is good to give thanks to the Lord for his blessings. And I think that's what Israel did at the writing of this song. They gave thanks for God's blessing to them. Understand that they were chosen out of all the nations of the earth to be God's people to be the people that God would guide. And so the uh, Psalms are just literally replete with expressions of thanksgiving. It was a regular part of worship. Thanksgiving ought to be every time the church meets together. It should be a regular part of Christian worship. You know, isn't it true that almost all of our prayers, almost all of our prayers begin with, we thank you, God. If, if it doesn't ring true the next time you pray, you will probably say it almost without thinking. The first thing that we say is, I thank you, God. Many of the songs that we sang, I selected three. I could have uh, selected a myriad of songs from our songbook. Many of our songs express thanksgiving to the Lord. Um, I would contend that this is a, a happy part of our worship when we give thanks to the Lord in praise and in uh song and in prayer and so as we get to the very beginning of verse 1 of Psalm 92 it says it is good to give thanks to the Lord and with that I have come up with four reasons why it's good to give thanks to the Lord I might challenge you this evening uh, to come up with more. As a matter of fact, your list will probably be much greater than four. So I've just limited it to four, uh, to four ideas that I have 
about why uh, it is important for us to give thanks to the Lord. There's a, a term out there that's current. I, I don't know how long it's been out there. I know sometimes I feel like I'm out of the loop as an older person, but I hear it a lot. And that is when people say, hey, keep it real. Keep it real. What does that mean? Well, that means that uh, uh, they expect from us the truth and they expect us uh, to say uh, what we mean and what is really important. Keep it real. And I think uh, this may be number one in the reasons why we ought to give thanks. I think it's good to give thanks because it helps us to see life the way it really is. And that is keeping it real. There's not one of us within my listening voice this evening that has not been blessed by God. And that's a fact. No one can truly say that there's absolutely nothing in this world that I have to be thankful for. I mean, I just thought of that over Thanksgiving and how thankful I were to have uh, uh, to that Jane and I have three happy, successful children. It, it gives joy uh, to my heart, and I'm so thankful for that. You know, giving thanks helps us to focus on the positive parts of life. You know, there's a song out there that says, uh, you know, to emphasize the positive and eliminate the negative. It's, it's the glass half full attitude. You know, we, we all have had problems. We've all had hardships. We've all gotten sick. We've all had people close to us who have gotten sick. We've all lost loved ones. We've all lost friends. Life is not without hardship. But on the other side of the scale, there are the blessings of life. I think of the great blessing that we have, that God has promised a home for us in heaven when this life is done. And so when one of our Christian uh, friends passes away, we, we just think that uh, he's in a better place now. He or she's in a better place because they've given their life to the Lord. And we give thanks for that. That's why often, and I, you know, in my profession, uh, I, I preach funerals. That's why very often uh, people want funerals to be celebrations of people's lives. You know, by the time the funeral comes around, people have grieved. Now they want celebration. They want to be lifted up. And so first, giving thanks helps us to focus on life as it really is. Second, it's good to give thanks. And sometimes we overlook this, and it's something that we have to, to really think about. We give thanks because good things done for us should never go unnoticed. As parents, we taught our children to say thank you. We know the magic words, the please and the thank you words. Thank you. This, this phrase should be the magic phrase. Even after we are older, it's not just a child thing. It's something that should uh, flow with us for the entirety of our lives. The magic term, thank you. We, we ought to be willing to give credit where credit is indeed due. It means we recognize those who, I guess, uh, who have given to us and, and we appreciate it. 
whether it's a kind word, a kind thought, keeping them in your prayers, a note, a phone call, a text. All of these things are ways that we give thanks and, and that it should never, ever go unnoticed. Parents love to hear thanks. Friends and fellow workers need it too. Our brothers and sisters in Christ need it too. Most of all, I believe, our Heavenly Father needs to hear it from his children. That's us. Going back to the psalm, it's good to give thanks to the Lord. Third, it's good to give thanks to the Lord, and pardon me for getting corny here, because it sweetens our hearts. It, it rids the heart of pride. Let's face it, all of us have some sense of pride within us. Now, by the way, pride isn't always wrong. I take pride in being a Christian. You know, we take pride in, in giving to others. We take pride in understanding that we have brothers and sisters in the Lord that are walking down the same path that we're walking down. A proud person, now taking pride to the negative side, very often never notices the things that are done for him. A compliment can be brushed aside like a, a, a fly that uh, is annoying to us. A compliment can be just brushed aside easily and quickly. But thanks and thanksgiving lets us realize that we're loved and that we mean something to someone else. How beautiful is that? How sweet that is in our life. How does that turn our lives around to realize that we're loved and that we mean some, something to someone else? And think of it. How special is that in our relationship with God and Jesus Christ? That's why the psalmist said, it is good to give thanks to the Lord. It puts all the pride aside and says, thank you, Lord. Thank you for this life that I have. And thank you for the blessings of this life I have. And we look around us, we see what people have done for us. And think of how much we must mean uh, to God because God has prepared a place for us to live with him eternally. And fourth on my list is it's good to give thanks because it literally lifts our spirits. You know, uh, to me, uh, you know, it's amazing how good one feels when we realize that love has been expressed to us and what has been given to us and that we are returning this by looking that person and saying, thank you. You know, when someone compliments us, we ought to not say, oh yeah, well, I am that. When someone compliments us, we ought to thank them because it came hopefully, from their hearts. What, what a thrill it is to see the glow in the face of someone that we have surprised with some sort of gift. And then we feel the warmth when one says, thank you very much. Magic words. You know, we are about to move from Thanksgiving and the, and the time shortens each year, it seems, uh, to Christmas. As we drive around our neighborhoods, we see that the Christmas lights and the Christmas scenes are all going up. 
and Christmas is supposed to be about a time that we give thanks for God sending Jesus into the world to us. And you know, Jesus received those gifts. And I think it is through that, that at Christmas time, we give gifts to one another. They are supposed to be expressions to others that they mean something to us. They are not oblig obligatory. We, we give them because the people that we give them to mean something to us. And so as we transition from giving thanks at Thanksgiving, we get at Christmas time to give thanks again. We think about the wonderful gift of Jesus Christ that God blessed us with. And if we take it full circle, we just participated in the Lord's Supper a few moments ago to the ultimate sacrifice that Jesus made for us. And we have to give thanks for that because we realize that through it, that we are indeed redeemed. God is so wise. And I think that he looks for us to try to gain wisdom in our hearts. And I think that God understands, matter of fact, I know that God understands that the giving of thanks would bless both the giver and the receiver. And it's something that we must have in our hearts. And so as we think of the Thanksgiving season, maybe we ought to imprint Psalm uh, chapter 92, verses 1 and 2, on our hearts. And just at the very beginning, where it said it is good to give thanks to the Lord, all of our blessings flow through our God. Our redemption flows through the sacrifice that Jesus made for each one of us. And we should wake up each morning with thanks on our heart. We should put our heads on the pillows at night with thanks in our heart. If, if there's any ending to this message, it would be, let's always give thanks. With that, I just pray that all of you have come to the Lord, that you have made God a part of your life. And if you have not, uh, we uh, know that, that if you've read and you've understood and you've been told what it takes to become a child of God, a Christian, that it takes confession and repentance and baptism, then this is your invitation to come this evening. If you haven't taken Jesus into your life, uh, we are at your beck and call. If you need to confess, repent, and be baptized, we will help you in any way that we can. Let's all pray together. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're grateful for the sacrifice that uh, you made for us in giving your son, that Jesus was willing to leave your right hand and come down to earth. We're so grateful for his teachings. We're so grateful for the master teacher that he was. Bless us and help us to be appreciative of all that we have. Help us to be appreciative in the words of Psalm 92, that it is good to give thanks to the Lord. Continue to bless us uh, through the evening. Help us to have you always on our hearts and help us to be thankful as children of God. Continue to bless us continue to be with us. We pray this prayer in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Please stay safe and may God bless you all.